giving money to a group of people does not hurt them. I mean, it sure, can't. you're talking about a lottery, you just hey, take can't. money. But yes. there, are, there are strings take attached money. to that money. Take all the there money. There are strings attached to that money. Give them millions. Money. Make them all millionaires. I don't care. Giving money to black people does not hurt them. And that, and ha that has that. not happened, though. That has not happened. What, what do you mean? That has not happened. Giving, no. it, it hasn't been a reparation. You're saying get, it hasn't been this so or that. I, it has been saying, a welfare program, welfare Great was Societies designed. Act, that welfare was built was, off of the idea of, hey, we get these families split up. We get these so people So then let them here. keep the family together and keep all the money. I mean, there you go. I Boom, guess so, done. but I'm, I guarantee you there, I guess there is so. no way Why that would Why would you not advocate for that? So hey, guys. My name is Devori Darkins, and welcome back to my channel. And in today, we're going to be discussing this, I would say, controversial topic of reparations for black Americans. Now, obviously, this is a social justice issue and also a political issue. And I would actually say this is a mindset issue before the previous two, by the way. And the reason why it is, is because where is this idea actually coming from, meaning like what place are we coming from with this idea? Are we coming from a place of abundance, right? Or are we coming from a place of lack? Are we coming from a place of forgive, like forgiveness? Or are we coming from a place of, you know, guilt, right? And so uh, I want to actually dive into this. I want to respond to this. Uh, I have a couple of videos queued up for us to take a look at. Uh, the first video is going to be about Jubilee. Uh, they actually brought in uh, two opposing sides on this issue. Uh, one side is the black conservatives, which is pretty interesting uh, who they chose, and then white liberals. So obviously they have two opposing views. Uh, the second video is actually going to be a, a clip about California and what they are planning to do. We're going to discuss all this and react to it. And without further ado, you already know what to do. Like, share, and subscribe. Let's play the video. When we talk about reparations, I think that doing reparations in the way that a lot of people think of it, where we just give it to black people, I'm not an expert on this, but I think it would be more income based and that in itself, like I said earlier, uh, would uh, disproportionately benefit black people because if you recognize that they are disproportionately uh, affected uh, by a systemic injustice, then doing it on like a class level would uplift proportionally more black people than white people. Okay, so I'm not too sure I understand his point, to be honest with you guys, but I, I'll try my best. Actually, let me start here. Do I believe that black Americans should receive reparations? No, I do not believe that because the energy behind it is coming from a place of guilt and lack and it's negative energy. That's where it comes from. And so it's not actually going to move our culture or our community forward. It'll actually... Um, I think it would do more damage to our community, if anything. And we've seen that because all we have to do is look at Native Americans. Throwing money at a problem is not the solution. We know this to be true. The solution is inside of ourselves. It's, it's, it's love, it's forgiveness, it's moving forward, it's moving on and coming together as one. No amount of money is going to do that. That's, that's what's so wrong about this entire subject because it's not coming from a place of abundance okay now is reparations in the context of law is it a legitimate thing yes um, are there situations where you know would it be a appropriate yeah I, I I'm sure there are cases like that I just don't see um, it, it doesn't pass the common sense test for black Americans today Maybe 50 years ago, it would have made more sense. I mean, we're in 2024 at this point. And by the time they do pass a legislation or a law to pay out black Americans, the ones that really should receive it, they're dead and gone. Right. I mean, if we really want to go down that road. But let's let's keep listening and see what he has to say. A class level would uplift proportionally more black people than white people or think, any other race. Yeah, I think like the, um, mostly like black GIs that were left out of like the New Deal, for instance, um, that to be able to come back and um, as a white American, as a white veteran to get um, a home loan and then build that generational wealth, um, you could not get that as a black American. Um, so there needs to be, I think reparations, I don't care really what form it comes from. Uh, I think free healthcare, uh, free college so that everyone has like an equal opportunity to um, 
to educate themselves to build a better life. Yeah, so he, he's, this is liberalism or, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. They believe that the government should just pay for everything. And the problem with this type of thinking is the money has to come from somewhere. And that means from me and you, ultimately. And people don't like hearing that because they think, well, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and it does matter because if you already do not like taxes, what do you think they're going to do? They're just going to raise more taxes. They're going to uh, enforce more regulation to generate more money to pay for these things. Right. The people in Congress, they're not coming out of their own pocket for programs like this. Americans will pay for it. And at a certain point, um, there needs to be good debate if you're going to have the American citizens paying for it. Now, let me uh, talk about something else that he brought up, which was he doesn't care what form it comes in. Right. So he's absolutely convinced that it should happen. But <laughs> listen, let's talk about mindset again. You know, why would I pay money to someone who wasn't impacted by, you know, whatever racist policies existed, you know, 70 years ago? Right. Like why me, me, I'm doing this video right now myself. Why would I receive money? Right. Nothing happened to me. I'm perfectly fine. OK. What matter of fact, you know, what did more damage in my life wasn't the system. It was my parents who were drug addicts and they were not married. That's what did more damage to me. Right. It's it's the the Hollywood and the music. in my culture did more damage to me. You know, so. You know, and, and then and then it, it becomes, OK, so if black people can get money. What about Jews? What about Japanese Americans still? You know, what about um, Arabs or uh, people from from the Middle East who were clearly, you know, people treated them differently after 9-11? What about people like that? You know, where where is the line at? Right. So it, it, it just it doesn't pass the common sense test for me. I think that if you if we impose or yeah, impose reparations now, I think it would rip America apart. I think that we're already separated enough as it is. And now you're going to have people walking around going, you owe me money. You owe me money. I'm not paying you any money. It would just really rip us apart. Giving, you know, and, and to add on to what she's saying, it's another excuse to get the government to be involved uh, in our pockets. Right. Uh, I tell people this all the time, and it doesn't matter what side you're on. You you have to sooner or later, if you exercise common sense, agree with this. More government is not the solution. It 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 isn't because it's not a one size fits all type of thing. And you know w when we create more gov government programs, that costs more money. Okay, and so someone has to pay for it. That's one. Number two, it's ultimate corruption, fraud, waste, and abuse. Meaning they're not really going to use the program in the way that it was intended. It will evolve over time and be corrupted because the people who created it, they're greedy. Right. I mean, that's how these things happen. Just for example, a, a current case study of this is California's homelessness problem. We've spent billions of money in California. OK, on the homeless problem. And it, it has actually gotten worse. And there is money missing. And there are people who can't say where the money went. And they even went as far to pass a law where they're preventing people from auditing where the money went. So so I tell you guys, government is not the solution. Somebody money doesn't mean anything if they don't know what to do with the money or how to handle the money. So if the primary issue in black culture or with black people is generational trauma, then maybe they need more therapy than they need money. Mm. I agree with her. I agree with her. Absolutely. It, uh, throwing money at someone is not going to make them happy. I mean, it just isn't. It, it just isn't. I, that's why I said our problems as a black community is not this issue. It's what's happening inside of our own homes. It's what's happening with our marriages. It's what's happening. Are we doing therapy? You know, these this limiting beliefs that are passed down from one generation to the next. Those are the actual root causes to our issues, not the fact that the government hasn't paid out reparations. <laughs> Which conservatives are also against. Well, that's kind of my <laughs> argument. Like if there is like that, like generational trauma or whatever, like I think 
examples of like free healthcare, um, it, they could see a therapist and not be, you know, fall into debt. And I, th this guy's act, he's not even a liberal. This guy's a socialist, meaning he wants the government to pay for everything. And that at that point, if the government pays for everything, that means the government owns everything. That means you don't own anything. And we see the result of that by looking at other countries, like let's say Brazil, for an example. Like the, these countries, they don't have a high quality of life because the government owns everything. So, I mean, he needs to be very careful with <laughs> promoting that idea. I think the argument of like the logistical nightmares of it, I think if we wanna pay for something in this country, we usually find a way to do it, especially when it comes to the military. Mm -hmm. So, um, it, I mean, we pay for, multi-billion dollar it's, it's jets not the all the dollars, time. It's who's supposed to get them. Yeah. Not to attack progressives, but that, that is like the most progressive yeah. idea in the world is like, mm -hmm. I can see the headlines, like reparations voted on in Congress to be paid in the form of free therapy for people in the hood. That just sounds like the funniest. Yeah, but before, if we go back, he's made a good point. Like, okay, it's not about the amount, it's who, right? So let's say I'm black, but my mom was German. Do I get money, right? Or let's say, I'm biracial. Do I still get money? Let's say they can't prove that my great grandfather was a slave. Do I get money then? I mean, <laughs> and then so how much money is it going to even cost to do this, right? Cuz not not just giving people the money, but the program itself, the people who are involved in the program, the people who are going to run the program, the application process, on and on and on. How long is it going to take, right? I mean, it's it's more money than what people are telling us. And they don't even, I don't even think they even have a number. Thing in the world, but. Well, I also don't think it's gonna come directly from like, you know, white person to black person. Like, oh, you, you um, your lineage uh, affected his lineage. I'm telling you guys, the, the mindset behind these issues in America, it needs to be addressed. This is coming from a place of fear, scarcity, and lack and limiting beliefs, okay? There are these limiting beliefs that exist that because you are black, you are oppressed. That's a limiting belief. What what facts, data or or numbers support that statement? Nobody is oppressing me today. The only person that can oppress me is my own mind. That's what they're not understanding. Well, you know, black people in Brooklyn, they don't know what computers are. So whose fault is that? Is that the government's fault or is it their parents fault? Is it the black community's fault? Right. So they what's happening is if you keep going down this road of these progressive policies, you are removing the skills and the mindset that would be needed for a community to grow because you're actually giving it to the government. So if the government fails at what they're supposed to do, which they commonly do, then the community itself does not have the mindset, does not have the skills, does not have the awareness to solve their own issues. So actually, let's go to this other clip here. We begin our newscast tonight with a look at the various reparation bills now under consideration in Sacramento. As state lawmakers work to move these bills through the legislative process, some members of the Assembly and Senate are hoping to advance a package of proposed reparations for descendants of enslaved black Americans. 17's Capitol correspondent Aton Wallace looks at which bills have made it through so far and which failed to advance. Well, it's been mixed results for reparations bills so far, but backers of the proposals tell me they believe they're off to a good start. A standing ovation in the state assembly after lawmakers voted 62 to nothing to advance a reparations bill calling on the state of California to publish a formal apology letter to descendants of enslaved black Americans. The most important thing is making sure we can we can get it out there. South Los Angeles assembly member Reggie Jones Sawyer authored the legislation. While he acknowledges California was never formally a slave state, he says since its inception in 1850, the state has implemented policies negatively impacting black California to the okay, I have to, I have to stop this. Guys, did you hear what they just said? They said that the state is going to issue an official apology letter. Okay, so I, I mean, think about it. So it, it means that there are black Americans in California in government positions, by the way, who are refusing to move on and they want the acknowledgement not only in the form of a letter 
but in the form of money. If that's not a victim, then I don't know what is. This date, noting California's first governor, Peter Burnett, was a slave owner from the South who openly called for creating a whites-only American West and helped put in place a law to send slaves back to the South if they fled. A letter um, not only talking about California's complicity in uh, chattel slavery, but making sure that California actually apologizes for what has happened. Not to make anyone feel guilty, but to be, serve as a healing document. Other reparations... A healing document. A healing document. Bills advancing include one requiring grocery stores to provide advance notice before closing down in underserved communities and a proposal by Senator Stephen Bradford to formally create what would be called the California American Freedmen Affairs Agency in charge of overseeing the reparations process in the state of California. Do you see what they do? They, I'm telling you, these, these politicians, they're so corrupt. They say, all right, we want to solve this problem, but wait a minute. We need to first create an agency for it so we could pay people to be on that agency. And then we need to make sure that my friend over here who owns a nonprofit, I'm going to give him the contract. Right. And even though my name's not on that nonprofit, he'll probably give me the money on the back end. Right. I mean, the people that you have to literally think for yourself, you really need to do research because um, and how do I know this to be true? I was in the military. I've seen government contracts before. I they, you you can't help it, okay? No one that's at the state or federal level who are handing out government contracts are doing so from a place of being unbiased. They are biased. They know who they're going to give it to. They know how much they're going to give them. And these people, they get paid. They get paid. And the problem actually does not get solved because, again, the government does not really solve people's problems because problems usually originate internally. That's where the problems are. Clean important for setting up the framework for reparations going forward. So I think we have a good foundation to work from. But several reparations-related bills did not make it, including Bradford's proposal to fund housing and property tax assistance for descendants of enslaved black Americans. I mean, disappointment. Reparations is about land. That's how we build generational wealth in this country. And African Americans have been denied ownership through redlining, restrictive covenants, and all kind of other restrictions. Got it. Got it. So we've been denied opportunities to build wealth. So let's let's talk about that. And I'm going to wrap this up. OK, the only person that has really, truly denied opportunity, if we're talking about today, OK, as a millennial, if I talk about my generation and younger, the only person that's denied our ability to build generational wealth is ourself. It's our ignorance. You know, we are not enforcing high standards on the younger generation, our children. When I was a kid, it, education was not top, top priority. It wasn't. Financial literacy was not a top priority. Mental health was not a top priority. But in other cultures, like the Asian community or the Indian community, where they expect all of their children to be doctors, engineers, architects, Right. That that is a standard that they've set from generation to the generation to the from generations on end. Now, even that is somewhat in a way toxic because not all Asians or Indians should be doctors if they don't want to be. Right. But that's how high the standard has been placed in their own communities. In the black community, that is not a thing. Are you know what our standards are? Rapper, athlete. That's what it's been for so long. Because we hold the belief that's the only way we are going to have any type of money or be successful. And because we hold that belief, that's why we see things the way we see them. And we're not seeing all this other abundance and these other opportunities because these beliefs have been passed down uh, from one generation to, to the next. So, you know, again, the, the problem when we move this way as a community, we're coming from a place of lack and victimization. And you are not going to get the outcomes you truly want when you approach problems from that point of view. And how do we know this to be true? Just use yourself as a case study. When you try to solve problems in your life from a place of victimhood, right, and wanting to be paid back, right, tell me when, when it actually worked, right? When you 
allow someone to borrow money from you and you keep thinking about that they owe you, tell me when that truly works for you. It causes what? Negative energy. It doesn't feel good. So that's my mindset about this. Uh, I want to hear from you guys. What do you guys think about this? I've been wanting to do a video about this for a while. Um, these are my thoughts. I want to hear your thoughts. What do you think about the whole idea of reparations in the first place? And what do you think about some of these bills that California has passed up to this point? Answer this and more in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.